So welcome to this uh, very uh, special edition of Chat with Chair. Um, you know, moving from the different subjects that we normally have, this is very interesting. This is on sports. And we are delighted to actually have with us uh, the chair of our sports uh, committee, uh, Mr. Sanjay Gupta, who is currently head of the uh, sports at the Star uh, TV network. Of course, he's had a long career in uh, TV and journalism. He started in ABP Networks, which at that time, I believe, a joint venture with Star um, there. Then he joined NDTV uh, as a news editor. He was in, in TV. And then, of course, he was a consultant and producer with Star uh, Movies and BBC World Services uh, Trust. And for the last about 11 years, he's been with uh, Star TV Network. Um, product of Delhi University, where it's very warm welcome uh, to you. I also see that you've actually done a, a Coursera a course on the global business of sports. So, uh, you know, it's very interesting and welcome uh, to this uh, session of chat uh, with Chair. It's a pleasure being here and having this conversation with you. Yeah, so the, you know, the world of sports is in huge, a uh, lot of activity happening. You have football going on in, 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 in Latin America or America, the Copa America, you have the Euro going on, Euro. Uh, you know, you have cricket going on, uh, you, you had the US Open in golf, uh, you had also the, 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 the French Open there, you have the test, uh, you know, um, championship uh, going on, and of course, around the corner is are the Tokyo Olympics, and, uh, you know, of course, uh, the IPL uh, got disrupted because of the second wave and it's going to be done here. So, you know, just a very quick, uh, you know, opening question on the IPL. It's actually one of the most uh, popular leagues, cricket leagues in the world. Uh, and I, I don't know whether it, it has greater viewership than some of the other leagues uh, there, but that maybe you can enlighten us. But uh, people mostly mention IPL for measuring the rate of success of sport leagues, especially in India. What uh, challenges do you, you know, uh, have you actually seen the IPL face to get where it is today? So just a bit of a background. So firstly, to, to answer the, the question, which was hidden inside the question, the IPL is the biggest cricket tournament that happens every year. And, and by virtue of that, it's one of the biggest sporting tournaments in the world, both in terms of viewership, in terms of scale, in terms of how many countries are represented in the tournament and just how many stakeholders are involved. So from, from every point of view, IPL today is perhaps India's biggest contribution on the global sporting map uh, in, in terms of the event that it has become. You know, it's an interesting question, Dilip. We, we, we tend to look at the success of IPL and uh, at times uh, perhaps underestimate how many challenges the IPL has faced, has had to overcome, and the kind of bold risks that the BCCI has taken with the IPL. Now, I just want to preface my answer by saying my direct involvement in IPL as a stakeholder started only in 2016 when we acquired the digital rights for the tournament. Uh, so some of the challenges that I'm going to speak of are more as an industry observer um, than a direct stakeholder. As, as I see IPL's history, there are, I think, three big challenges that IPL faced. One, and the challenges are very similar to the kind of challenges that any new product or any new uh, category uh, faces. Uh, the first challenge, of course, was the launch challenge itself. Um, now, one could argue cricket was always popular. So why was launching IPL a challenge? The reason why it was a challenge was conventional wisdom said the reason why cricket was popular in this country was because of national pride, because all of us watched Team India, because India, the team represented us. Um, and there was an abundance of cricket. There was a lot of cricket being played by Team India. And frankly, there were only so many days of cricket that the team could play. So how do you create a new product in a fairly congested year with limited inventory of cricket days available? And, and that challenge itself was, um, was requ required the BCCI to take some bold risks. They bet on a format that at that time wasn't popular, right? The T20 format was still gaining acceptance. In fact, most core cricket fans 
considered it to be pajama cricket even more than odi cricket was at one point um it required the bcci to think about cricket very differently uh, so no longer were players representing their national teams they were actually playing together uh, and representing teams that didn't exist in the past which added a differentiation to the product from everything else that was already available uh, the packaging of the tournament itself needed to be differentiated from what fans were used to when you know in, in years of watching cricket which was a double edged sword because it also meant that you could alienate a lot of fans because it was so differentiated from the kind of cricket that you were watching otherwise um but i think beyond these bold risks the, the one thing that the bcci did was they kept the focus on cricket so the ipl was truly um the exhibition of best cricket that the world of cricket had to offer the who's who of the cricket world descended upon uh, india and and played this tournament so the level of competition the level of sport uh the intensity of competitiveness all of it was top notch so the first real challenge that the bcci had to overcome was to gain acceptance for a new product in a in a market which already had a lot of cricket and had very strong opinions about the kind of cricket that it wanted to watch this the second challenge after the the launch challenge itself and, and there were many challenges along the way right shifting to south africa at uh, at such short notice in season 2 uh, the expansion etc but i think the second major challenge that the ipl faced was a credibility challenge uh, after what happened with the betting and the spot fixing controversy uh, there was an element of erosion of credibility that um, that the ipl faced the prospect of uh and i think it was important for bcci to be decisive and swift in it in its decision making and and perhaps also go against popular opinion we all know how popular one of the franchises that was suspended that at that point was and how it um, it it affected fans but it did take the hard decision to in the interest of the tournament and the game so to to rebuild the credibility of the league which was affected by that controversy i think was the second big challenge the third big challenge um was around how do you grow a product that has matured over 10 years and i think that's where we believe as star and disney india we've played a fairly significant role as rights holder which acquired the rights to the ipl in 2018 to grow the league from what it had already become which is this massive extravaganza uh, and across three vectors right um, it was a different perspective a fresh perspective on the ipl which focused a lot more on cricket because we believe what happens on field really defines the ipl and defines any cricket tournament um, we wanted to take ipl much deeper into regional markets especially southern markets uh, and markets in the east uh, which was a which was a major plank of 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 our strategy and the third and you know perhaps the most defining aspect or vector of of its growth over the last 3 years has been digital and and the explosion of um, ott consumption which has powered the growth of ipl on 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 disney plus hotstar so i think those have been the three big challenges the launch challenge itself um, the the credibility challenge that it faced and then the the challenge over the last 3 years of growing a product or a property that has already matured and evolved over 10 years and has already become the biggest tournament possible and all all three of these challenges have required uh, some bold decision making and some risk taking which credit for which must go uh, to the bcci and to some extent the other stakeholders who have been involved in the ipl yeah thank you for that perspective I remember the early days of ipl and you know, a lot of people actually talked about you know getting bollywood uh, you know entertainment and and, and cricket uh, together but really you know your 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 take was on the focus on the game etc although you know to make it tv friendly you have done a lot of uh, uh, different uh, you know innovations there you have the offline pitch and then you have in fact in some of the other leagues world you know worldwide they actually have people on the field uh, talking while the game is going on to mm. so that's that's the kind of a you know engagement there but I I I like to just take this and look at it you know you also popularized the kabaddi league right? yes 
but you know kabaddi is a kind of a local sport but the other leagues if i take the indian soccer league or if i take the indian hockey league you know why are these uh, you know where they are uh, versus that you know you you mentioned when you were talking about you got the best of the cricketers from around the world to come and participate but you know in in let's say in the hockey league yes we are getting some of the best of the world to participate but not necessarily in the soccer league and also how can you know what do we need to do in the other sports to actually mm-hmm. make uh, you know make it uh, very attractive for people to be in india i think each of these sports has a reality of its own right uh, and let's just take two for uh, you know the, the, the sake of uh, keeping it comprehensive let's take kabaddi and and football slash soccer as you as you called it um kabaddi is effectively india's own sport right um and it was a sport that had more or less vanished uh, other than being seen as a recreational activity it was still played there were still kabaddi nationals and there was you know there was obviously a federation and there were uh, athletes participating in the sport but for all practical purposes it had more or less disappeared from the indian sporting map or the indian sporting calendar um however the affinity for the sport at the local level as you rightly said was very high um there is immense participation in this in the sport at an amateur level and what the sport needed in 2014 with when when we relaunched it as as pro kabaddi league was a dose of what we can call the professionalization aspect and the presentation aspect of sport uh, it needed to be presented so it, you know one of the big moves that we made was to take it from mud to mats right and and the, the whole idea behind that was to present a a much more refined new age um, version of kabaddi while keeping the basic tenets of the sport the same and what we've seen with kabaddi is in in core markets where there has been high levels of affiliation for the sport the league has taken off so markets like maharashtra karnataka uh, andhra pradesh and telangana where where the sport was followed and there is participation in the sport we've seen uh, the, the the league actually compete for attention even with cricket um how do you take it from there to truly become a nationwide phenomenon is 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 something that is the next chapter of its journey which 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 has begun um so most most players in uh, a lot of players in kabaddi come from haryana uh, right so there is obviously affinity for the sport in the north uh, how do you grow it and how do you uh, continue to build on the early successes of the league is, is something that phase 2 of that journey is, is is about so i think kabaddi is very uniquely positioned Uh, to be a sport which is actually very high in terms of participation and familiarity but needed to be presented in a way which was international slick with all the razzmatazz that a professional league must have uh, to gain acceptance football on the other hand uh, has very different challenges and and some of them you alluded uh, to right now which is in terms of football india's the not not the best right uh, indian the, the the standard of indian football has increased significantly over the last 5 6 years but it's still not the best in the world um and and thus uh, the affinity for football um, in in markets beyond kerala west bengal uh, we are beginning to see green shoots in mumbai chennai bangalore uh, is is still growing and and it's still at an early stage so while there are learnings that the leagues must take from each other and from leagues around the world each of these products is actually a unique proposition and 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 faces unique challenges and realities and thus the 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 trajectory or the journey for each of these leagues also has to be mapped according to those realities so in terms of what isl and pkl need to need to do to grow uh, one they need to continue to build the fan base um, they need to continue to build on the traction that the the sports both sports have had in their core markets make the core market stronger but also look at ways of expanding to newer markets by way of both um, the 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 on air product as well as participation and i think both need to go hand in hand 
uh, this if both sports have to grow because don't forget that the IPL does benefit from a super structure of domestic cricket which continuously creates talent and creates opportunities and is really the foundation of IPL that foundation uh, doesn't exist to the same measure for football and kabaddi so while we continue to focus on on the leagues and how popular they are and um, and 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 grow their viewership and their fan base it's also important to continuously focus on the foundation to ensure that there is enough talent coming through and that the standard of sport is increasing year year on year yeah so i think this brings me to a question that there are two very interesting uh, dichotomies here you know uh, one is that everything seems to be male dominated right uh, mm. women sports is not actually getting that kind of uh, uh, visibility and all right uh, so you know how do we and i'll come to the second part uh, a bit uh, later how do we actually uh, you know popularize both women in sports and also women uh, here you know i mean frankly we are all focused on the new zealand india uh, you know match but uh, there was also a women's uh, series there where some historic uh, achievements uh, were made by some of the indian uh, players but we tend to relegate women sport uh, to the background you know how can you know tv is a great medium because you know i mean it's watched by i think i can understand spectator sport but you see a lot of women also going out to watch spectator sport the sports of course what do we actually get women uh, more Uh, you know involved in in and in a part of this process hmm. dilip there is a misnomer that women don't watch sport and i'd like to firstly you know address that uh, unequivocally uh, women do watch sport in fact 45% of uh, cricket viewership tends to be female um so it's it's not half it's less than half but it's it's fairly significant right so there are women watching sport so let's set that aside i think the question that you're asking is what do we do to really push and drive the agenda of women's sport uh, and how do we ensure that we see enough diversity in the sport we watch um right so the, how do we ensure that there is enough women's cricket available uh, and and we get we have the opportunity to watch it and and it it starts with the opportunity to watch right uh, till till um, if i'm not wrong till about 6 or 7 years back all all games of the women's world cup weren't even broadcast uh, they weren't even put on air so you so here was a women's world cup happening and of the of the total number of matches you would get to watch a select 10 um, and and i think fundamentally the first move for us and and for for the ecosystem has to be that these women who are playing the game who are representing the country they need to be seen by everyone followed by everyone and fans should have the option and the opportunity to actually watch them appreciate them and become fans of um, their their prowess uh, and and i think we've seen a we've seen a significant shift as far as cricket is concerned and we are beginning to see green shoots in uh football uh, so isl for example um the the season before last did have a, a women's league as well um we've seen a, a women's version of the pkl also happening in the past so and obviously you know we we've, we've seen women athletes garner so much attention um and rightly so for their exploits in in their uh, areas of expertise and in the sports that they represent the country in so i think there is the first thing was the attention which they now have which women in this country now have um the the the, the second part of this is how do we continue to build on this attention and this affiliation by one driving the opportunity to watch which is just by having more content on air at all times uh, and having a calendar that fans can follow just the way that they follow uh, men's sport um and the, and the second part of it is how do we ensure that there is enough talent coming through um the 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 funnel and the pipeline to ensure that the the ecosystem itself expands and it's not just at the elite level but at all levels that we we see more diversity and and more women participating in sport um and i think 
uh, an initiative like the Khelo India School Games, which places equal emphasis on women or, or girls' participation, uh, is is a is a great move forward. And I think it's something that all federations and all sporting bodies must look to do, which is to not just focus at the elite level of what needs to happen for the elite athletes, but also focus on how they're building this pipeline of talent that's coming through. Uh, and I think, you know, that's the fundamental way forward for women's sport. The, the other part of it, which is perhaps, and, and you're aware of this because you've been a sports person yourself and a keen observer of, of sport, there is, there, there is a deeper malaise with the, 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 the culture in this country which doesn't promote participation in sport in general for boys and girls and you've seen it yourself, right? Um, and, and which is why the FIKI Sports Committee, uh, the pri our primary agenda is to build a sporting culture in this country because that's the only way that India can genuinely become a sporting nation, much more than any other metric. Uh, it, I think it is the level of participation at all levels that needs to go up for all other metrics to move the malaise becomes much deeper for girls. And you know, we've done multiple studies to understand why is it that girls don't participate. And the, the inhibitors tend to be um, school, parents, um, community. Uh, and on facets such as, um, and, and I'm you know, a bit embarrassed to say this, but uh, the, you know, the concerns that, that, that parents tend to have are related to complexion, uh, which is skin color, which is unfortunate, uh, scarring, um, you know, and, and the possibility of injuries while playing sport, and 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 even outfits. Um, there is a lot of conservatism around the kind of outfits that girls need to wear if they have to play sport. So I think there is there needs there is almost a need for a shift in mindset as well, which is obviously going to be a a, a, a long drawn process, but I think we've made a start by just showing women playing sport across, uh, you know, popular media. Thank you. So you actually answered part of my uh, second um, question as part of this here. But you know, I think if if, if you were to take a single agenda, right, of how do you popularize sport in the country, right? Uh, you know, what could the federations do? What could the states do? You know, I mean, I'm sure uh, many viewers will not be aware that, you know, uh, many states and many cities have their own league, right? Uh, for mm -hmm. example, Hyderabad has their own Hyderabad Cricket League, they have the Hockey yeah. League, they have the Football League, but, you know, nobody knows about that, right? Similarly, Delhi and, you know, uh, and in, in your, in your uh, you know, uh, explaining or highlighting the states that look at football, Obviously, you missed out Goa because everybody takes it for granted, I suppose. But you know, how do we popularize sport? You know, what does what do we do as a nation to popularize sport? You mentioned Kelo India as one. Yeah. Uh, right? How do we popularize sport? And linked to that, uh, you know, is what roles could corporates actually play? The two different questions, but if you can mm -hmm. just uh, address them in one go, so it will be better. Yeah. I, I don't think there is a silver bullet, uh, Dilip. Um, I think this has to happen at multiple levels um, by multiple stakeholders. And all of us have, have roles to play. Uh, I, I do think that it's important for us to showcase um, sporting achievements uh, because that, that drives inspiration. And inspiration tends to be a huge driver or a motivation for kids to actually pick up sport or, or participate. Um, but at the same time, uh, we also need to, as I was saying earlier, change the mindset around sport. Um, not just in terms of sport as a career, but also sport as a pastime, sport as an integral part of a child's development. Right? Um, there, are, there is enough neurological, psychological, sociological research now available, which suggests that sport and playing sport um, plays a huge role in the development of, um, you know, the, the, the holistic development of, of, a, of a child. Uh, in fact, there are studies which say um, playing sport is as important as sleep and nutrition 
for a child's development. Uh, and, but I think there needs to be acceptance of, of, of this to begin with, that, that sport is as integral to a child's development as anything else. Uh, and then then they need there needs to be almost an action based agenda around how do we get kids to play more um, kids in india play less than 1/10th or 1/20th as much as their counterparts in the us canada australia or any of these markets they spend as little as 10 minutes on an average playing in a week and that to me is largely on account of the choices they are being forced to make because inherently uh, i would like to believe that a child's instinct is to play um, because it it just comes more much more naturally than anything else but what is happening is there are inhibitors being added at at every step of the way uh, which prevent him or her from from indulging in in sport or even just play and i think we need to almost systematically look at ways of removing those hindrances and as you said khelo india is perhaps one step in that direction which actually incentivizes schools uh, to get kids to play because it becomes a matter of pride for the schools to do well in these games and thus they have an incentive then to ensure that their students are actually participating in sport but it it needs to work at different levels it needs to work um at, you know as an offshoot of what we were discussing earlier it needs to work for women because in a household and in a society uh, women tend to be the proactive agents of change so if there is a change in the way that kids have to be nurtured and sport has to almost be infused into their development the the acceptance needs to happen for the woman who is responsible for the child's development in in most cases so i think it it it, need, it is a cultural shift it's not going to happen overnight um it will require several levers um to be to be pushed all at the same time and all stakeholders need to play their part um the government needs to play their part you know the government needs to incentivize in various ways that that it can kids to play elite at at elite athletes to be taken care of the systems to function in a way where uh kids don't drop off because the other big problem that we have and again you you will have experienced this personally because you would have seen so many kids who grew up playing hockey with you drop off at some point we see a huge drop off after the age of 12 because the 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 system just doesn't support kids to continue playing for two reasons one it is believed that a sporting career is too hard to pursue or for that matter the system just doesn't have the uh, the ability to hold on to talent uh, if it's not being rewarded immediately and 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 i think that's the other piece which is there needs to be a systemic change in the way that we handle kids and and youngsters who want to continue playing um even beyond participation so you know the lever of participation has to be driven we need to widen the funnel kids need to play a lot more then kids need to be kids need to be made to stay engaged with sport which is a role that schools can 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 play in in a big way and after a certain age sporting bodies must take ownership of talent and must create the systems required for those kids to to continue playing and and go from being amateur athletes to professional athletes and even if they don't become professional athletes they have careers that they can depend on after playing sport so i think it, there isn't a silver bullet and i know it's a long long winded answer i'm i'm sorry if you were looking for you know almost a, a you know a, a single point agenda but there there isn't one it's you, we're we're trying to reinvent the culture in this country which has almost been so focused on a- academics and almost anti sport that it will take us multiple levers to to change that well, i i think that's that's a fascinating answer and just to answer you know that i have seen that schools where uh, you had everybody come out and play at a given time rather than having a physical education period in different classes and all schools that actually had you know access to playgrounds and everybody came out to play actually did not find that drop out you know at the age 12 or they i think the drop out came and there was a choice you either went for a physical yeah. education thing etc so that was the, the second thing i, I really say is that 
uh, yeah, I think parents and, 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 and the whole society needs to look at sports people uh, differently and the whole nation needs to come out and play. Just to wrap it up, what are the two or three things that the corporates could do to promote sport? Well, I think corporates are, Dilip, and you've seen this yourself. And, you know, as, as, um, as, as the sports committee, we've been encouraging um, corporates to, to come forward and, and, and play a more active role in the ecosystem. I, I think we've seen significant change in the last six years, you know, since I think 2014-15 was the big inflection point where, um, where we saw major corporates um, enter the ecosystem. Um, obviously, some have been doing it for the longest time, the, the likes of Tata's and, you know, the, their contribution to sport cannot be understated. Um, but I think between 2014 and 2016, we saw a significant shift. And there is the way that, a, that any corporate would look at sport would be that there is a business case and there is a moral case, right? So there is an aspect of um, getting into the ecosystem because it's an investment in the future. And there is an aspect of corporate social responsibility. And I think corporates are now increasingly seeing value from, from both. Uh, so whether it is investment in the private leagues in this country, uh, you know, uh, corporates coming forward and buying teams, um, there are now major corporates who manage players, elite players' careers. Uh, they participate in leagues in, as investors or as franchise owners slash team owners. Um, we've seen as 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 the sporting culture grows, there, there is obviously the desire to invest in in fields such as infrastructure and sporting equipment uh, manufacturing. Uh, we are also seeing new vectors or new sectors within sport emerge, um, fan engagement, um, the likes of fantasy, um, or for that matter, sports technology. And I think there is a, a you know, increased investment coming in to those spaces because they're, they're seen as growth areas uh, within the sports ecosystem. And then the other side of it is, you know, the social responsibility aspect of it, which is there is immense soft power in sport. Um, which which all of us must acknowledge and contribute towards. Um, you've you've spoken about it at, at multiple forums. The important importance of India being seen as a sporting powerhouse because it it, it builds India's equity in 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 the global uh, in the global ecosystem. Um, and I think given the right levers and given the right um, environment for uh, for 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 corporates to participate in. And, and I think that's where the government needs to play a more active role in, in creating an environment which is a lot more conducive to private investment. Um, there are, on, on, both, on both sides, whether it's the business case or the moral case, uh, there is, we have seen increased participation and we will continue to see increased participation as the sporting culture grows. Uh, and, and fundamentally, at the end of it, um, you know, at, at the very core of it is the culture of play, because the more this country plays, the more uh, kids play, the more sports is all around us, the, you know, the, the larger the ecosystem is going to be and, and, and there will be that much more incentive for corporates to invest in, in the sector, uh, one, from the point of view of returns. But two, uh, more importantly, or at least in the immediate term, also from the point of view of um, really giving back to, to, to society something that's of fairly, you know, which is fairly critical. Thank you uh, for that, you know, for starting with the IPL journey, getting women uh, involved in sports, uh, you know, building a sporting culture uh, in India. And then, of course, uh, uh, talking about how corporates uh, can get into the sporting arena. And I think in the corporates thing, you can actually sponsor the local league. You can sponsor uh, sports in the school that your children go to or, you know, grandchildren go to, whatever the case would be, or your neighborhood school, uh, you know, to all the resident welfare associations, you can actually open up your uh, parks for actually playing rather than prohibiting playing there. Mm -hmm. Because I think that's a big uh, thing here. But thank you very much uh, for your time and it was fun chatting to you and let's hope that we can you know just transform Indian, india into a great sporting nation so thank you and keep well and keep safe 
माय प्लेजर दिलीप थैंक यू सो मच